well, shoot my dog and call me Sally. What? What the fuck? Thank you all for your amazing support on a video I admittedly didn't think would do too well. As always, leave your comments down below to be featured next time and enjoy the video. Just as Naughty Dog had to put down their Naughty Dog, Insomniac had to part ways with everyone's favorite purple pass. And it turned out absolutely horribly. And they had to say goodbye for basically the same reason Naughty Dog had to with Crash. Insomniac never actually owned Spyro and was in fact owned by Universal Interactive. They're the real money bags here, capitalist pigs. And Insomniac must have some sort of capitalist fetish because what's the theme of their new series, Ratchet and Clank? Money. But how did Ron and Cole meet? Well, it all started on this really cool home screen, okay? I cannot stress enough how much I love this calm before the storm vibe I'm getting from this. It's just really cool. Anyway, so the next morning, the game begins on Ratchet's home planet, Veldin, with him trying to build his spaceship. Where does he want to go? I hear you totally not asking. I don't know. Then we hard cut to a factory somewhere else in space to see B54296, aka Clank. And I love how they came up with his name. My serial number is B54296. Oops. I'll just call you Clank for short. But before we get to that, we actually have to find Clank who crash landed on Veldin after escaping from his factory, because an info bot showed him anal golf. Or Drex plans to destroy the universe. Could have been that too. And our adventure truly begins with this extensive shot of the area and some funky ass beats to accompany us shit stomping some frogs. The amazing music and visuals are consistent throughout the game, with the music somehow managing to be atmospheric, catchy, and simply memorable all at the same time in a majority of the different locations. Between vast landscapes, cityscapes, tropical settings, and space stations, there's eye candy to marvel at every corner, and the game knows how good it looks because as I mentioned with the massive shot of Veldin, the game does this with every level you enter, and there are some amazing ones where you can really feel the scale of the world you're exploring. The aesthetic of this game from top to bottom, even even the menus and loading times is on point. Mostly joking aside, after mowing through the waves of enemies occupying the plateau, we find the unconscious Clank and bring him back to Ratchet's home. As he continues to work rigorously on his spaceship, Clank surprises him and mentions that he is looking for Captain Quark, the galaxy's most famous superhero for some reason, <laughs> in the hopes of getting him to help take down Chairman Drek. Drek is trying to build the perfect planet for his people after his planet has become too polluted to be inhabitable, so he's ripping apart certain components of other planets across the galaxy and meshing them all together to create a super planet for his people to live. This obviously would lead to the extermination of billions and billions of people, and in the end Drek doesn't even actually care about saving his species because this is all one big scheme for money. As for every square inch of this new planet he creates, he is getting paid for. He is the one who polluted his old planet and he plans on continuing this vicious cycle for years and years making a fuck ton of money over and over again. He's ruthless, merciless, has a bit of humor to him. Stop this madness now! Okay, wait. You're right. I will withdraw my troops. Really? No! Now of course the only way to find Quark is to use the Ratchet spaceship which coincidentally is lacking a robotic ignition system which Clank of course is equipped with. The two head for Novalis and Shrek has his troops ambushing the planet as he kills anyone who gets in the way of creating his new one. Our two heroes land on Novalis and they're dead. Oh wait no they're alive but they somehow contracted mild ventriloquism in the accident. We're not leaving the way we came in. Perhaps we could procure a ship from- What? Navalis is the perfect first level, introducing the meat and potatoes of what you can expect. Like Navalis, just about every game in the level divides into multiple pathways, each with a unique objective. Paths usually lead to gold bolts, items, gadgets, weapons, or coordinates for your next destination to continue the story. Each pathway offers something that will either progress your journey or enhance your experience during it. Plus there's different soundtracks for different pathways of the same level, so that's neat. On this planet, we're also introduced to the Gadgetron Vendor. Hi there, Fuzzball. The Gadgetron Vendor, of course, sells weapons and ammunition in exchange for bolts, which you can acquire by smashing crates, dispatching enemies, comes a giant fish! <laughs> destroying pieces of the environment, or even by using a metal detector. Ah, fuck, it was the trap I drank. I've fallen into consumerism. Bolts don't typically come in large quantities, so it'd be wise to buy as little weapons and ammunition as possible for as long as you can hold out for. I mean, honestly, a bunch of them aren't even that good anyway. Ratchet's wrench is strong enough as is for a good portion of enemies 
enemies, even capable of one hit KOing towards the end of the game. You can simply swing your wrench, throw it, and even jump and strike with it. Alright, fuck me. But when your wrench can't get the job done and a proper strafing function doesn't exist so you keep getting mauled, no this doesn't count, it still sucks and got introduced two thirds of the way through the game, there are a few weapons that can really save your hiney. The blaster is available very early on and is a good high rate of fire middle range weapon, and honestly is more useful against the final boss than any other weapon I purchased. But that definitely doesn't make it your most valuable asset because that honor belongs to the Visabomb. This thing is a necessity for taking down larger and more powerful enemies like ships and spotlights. The Pyrocitor is a good one to use in the beginning third of the game, especially against devilish fucks like these, but gets severely outclassed by the Tesla call once you have the means to afford it, if you even do. Yes, I could afford it, so I'm better than you. But the drone device will work just fine for dealing with those herds of smaller enemies as the drones act like a shield. Ironically enough, the small enemies are your biggest threat in this game, and no, that's not me making fun, these guys literally whooped my ass dozens of times. And I've got a dozen different things to say about the combat. On one hand, the lack of a good strafing ability does hinder the experience, leaving you awkwardly walking in circles trying to evade incoming attacks, and weapons aren't always so quick to lock on either. There's instances where you have to manually aim down, but that just leaves you wide open, so that's not very ideal either. Also, you have this quick select ring, and by holding triangle, you can quickly swap out your weapons and gadgets, but when you use the ring, the game doesn't pause. So again, you're leaving yourself wide open. Sometimes it's best to just take the long route of pausing the game, going to the menu, and selecting the tool you need. Luckily, this never gave me much of a problem, but of course, it's something still worth noting, as Ratchet can only take four hits before he croaks. I mean, look at the poor guy he spent. Unless you buy premium and ultra nanotech. Nanotech is the energy that restores your health, and the latter of those two is pretty expensive. Surprisingly, this caution you have to approach combat with also works in a way, as you have to be more calculating about your ammo since it can be fairly expensive for certain weapons. On top of that, as I said, you don't have much health to work with, so you can't just bull rush the competition guns blazing like later installments give you more liberty in doing. Not that the way the games after this does things is wrong, but I guess what I'm trying to say is if you play your cards right, this works too. Although I admittedly found myself relying on the vis bomb way too much towards the end of the game, so yeah. Although you spend plenty of time blowing shit up with guns, you also blow shit up with jet fighters, which control really smoothly and feature your standard rapid fire lasers and missiles. You only use the jet fighter a handful of times, but it makes the most of its screen time, as it's pretty fun. There's also two turret sections in the game, and I know everyone hates turret sections, but these were actually pretty alright in my opinion. Oh, and you also do hoverboard races. First one's alright. Second one can suck a cheetah's dick. While bolts are mainly used for buying weapons and all that nuclear jazz, you also have to sometimes use them to buy infobots off of all the scoundrels in this universe. Akin to the cutscenes from Spyro 2, infobots show you a little movie to give an introduction to what you can expect to encounter at your next destination. And of course, the videos are hilarious. Eject! Eject! Thank you guys for picking up Spyro 3 slack. <laughs> the cast of characters you come across are, you guessed it, oozing with personality. Between Skid McMarks, which is a shitty pun, the plumber, Geronimo! Al, ah. Mark Apply, mean Captain Quark, <laughs> I never wanted to skip a cutscene because the various cast of characters always kept me so entertained. You will find raritanium for me. No, I will not. Piece of junk. Not to mention the way Ratchet and Clank play off each other. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> Nerd. I like him. While Ratchet's not a horrible person, I wouldn't necessarily call him a good person when the game begins, or even for the majority of it for that matter. Ratchet's ill-mannered, self-absorbed, and focuses way too much on trying to have fun rather than the task at hand, while Clank is pure-hearted, always trying to do the right thing, and tries to waste no time saving residents and planets of the galaxy and putting an end to Drek's plans. But this sharp contrast between the two leads to some money moments between them as well. There's an awful plot being hatched to destroy our planets. Ratchet, he knows. Great. Does that mean we can go hoverboarding now? Throughout the game, Clank receives various upgrades such as a helipack and jetpack, each allowing Ratchet to charge forward, jump higher, and hover. The jetpack can also be used to bust these buttons that appear here and there. But Clank is more than Ratchet's parachute. He is his own man, and he has his own sidekick, Skadjabots. Fuck me! These little dumbasses will follow Clank's every command and will carry out their master's wishes relentlessly. Just look at these ferocious liquidators absolutely eviscerating their prey! <laughs> Honestly, there's not much to Clank missions. They're basically escorting these little guys from point A to point B while evading hazards, and if one of them gets destroyed, you have to go back to where they originally spawn and escort them again until you can get all of them into their own little house thing. Again, not terrible, not good either, it's just kinda 
Eh? And I guess by the end of the game, the developers got tired of Clank Sections 2 and decided to create Giant Clank, who completely obliterates anyone and anything in his way. And as you'd expect from Mindless Destruction, it's really fun, just like the grind boots. You just ride along these rails, avoiding whatever hazards come your way, but I just love grinding and sledding and riding sections and all that in games. And this absolutely meets the mark for me. There's also Magna Boots, which allow you to divide- there's also Magna Boots, which allow you to divide gra- Yeah, There's also Magna Boots, which allow you to divide- Fuck, fuck. You can walk on magnetic walls, you know what I'm saying. They don't offer much from a gameplay perspective, but they're enjoyable for the spectacle alone. There's also several cool gadgets that help to break the pace of the game, shifting the focus to more puzzle-orientated gameplay. There's the Trespasser, which is an infiltration device used to hack doors through laser puzzles. They're a lot of fun, and some of them are really thought-provoking, and admittedly, I beat two or so of them by complete accident. But I love the challenge they bring to the table. The Hydro Displacer fills and drains pools, and sometimes you have to fill and drain several times due to things in your way before you can make it across how fun the swing shot is used to swing obviously and it's not really used too cleverly except for this one amazing time on Ultanus as a pathway to a gold bolt and it's horrifying how much my blood was pumping during this which leaves us with the hollow guys and it's fine you just use it to fool these dumbass robots into opening doors for you. And these aren't the only robots who get fooled because Clank does too. Stupid defect, I knew he should have been aborted. So after eventually tracking down Captain Quark, he tells you to meet him at his headquarters to complete his gauntlet to ascend to the rank of heroes. After completing the course, he encourages you to step onto this platform and Ratchet doesn't seem too convinced. But it turns out, Ratchet was right to be suspicious. Clank, who was eager to be rewarded by Quark, drags Ratchet onto the platform, causing them to fall right into his trap. Yes, that's right, Quark's been secretly working for this whole time as he's been paid to be the spokesman for Drek's new planet. What? No way! I didn't see that coming! Quark forces the duo to tackle the infamous Blargy and Snaggle Beast. But... Why? But... Why? Ah! The same beast that nearly felled Quark years ago, and it's easy as piss. All you have to do is shoot him until he puts a shield up, prompting you to lead him onto a bridge over lava, which he causes to collapse. Cause he's fat. Ah! Do that a few times and that's it. Pathetic bosses are mostly a theme for this game. I mean, just look at this idiot. Of more importance here though is the fact that this causes a schism between Ratchet and Clank. Holy shit. And despite the galactic threat Drek poses, Ratchet blatantly disregards the potential annihilation of literally billions of people across the galaxy just so he can settle the score with Quark. Which is psychotic. I get that Ratchet wanted to leave Veldon and see the universe, and he kind of just got dragged into this superhero stuff by Clank, so he doesn't necessarily see saving the galaxy as his responsibility, but still, come on, guy. As time goes on, though, the seeds are planted as he slowly does begin to realize the severity of the situation. After running some more errands across the galaxy, the duo head off for the Gemlik moon base. Clank wants to find Drek, and of course, Ratchet wants to find Quark. Luckily enough for Ratchet, Quark was ordered by Drek to personally dispatch the two in space. It's your little jet fighter versus Quark's big boy with him firing missiles and more missiles at you until he sends out a fleet of goons to help out his quickly going downhill battle. Once you take care of them, he starts shooting bombs at you and then he's done. It's an alright fight made much more fun by the spectacle of it taking place over this moon base he just had to conquer. And it's nice to finally see Ratchet really begin to put this Quark shit behind him after realizing just how selfish he's really been and all the damage he could have prevented from the start had he just focused on Drek. After exploring the planet that Drek left in ruins below the base, you purchase an infant about from this poor guy who can't hear anymore because of all the bombs Drek set off. Hey, look, you can think I'm an asshole for laughing. At least I didn't joke about it. No one is around to buy anything. Are you okay? Low prices? Oh, you bet! The Infobot contains coordinates for Clank's home planet, but before you can get into the factory where he was created, you need the hollow guys that I mentioned earlier. After breaching the factory, you reach the room where Clank was born, and an Infobot discloses Drek's plan to destroy Veldon with a Deplanetizer, and have his new planet take its place because Veldon, as Drek claims, occupies the perfect orbit, but we all know Drek's just being an asshole. This is where Ratchet fully realizes that shit is getting real, and he shouldn't have been such a selfish, narrow-minded c- And with that, your journeys come full circle all the way back to Veldon, complete with a crushing atmosphere as Drek's new planet is fully constructed and looming above. After making your way through Drek's forces, you confront the not-so-big man and a big bot himself, and I guess Insomniac saved all their goodies for the final fight because this fight is pretty darn good. The battle begins with a short-lived collision between Giant Clank and Drek's mech, after which you pursue Drek as he fires missiles, explosives, and homing bombs at you. Eventually, the battle moves over to the Deplanetizer. Here, Drek will throw at you what I've already mentioned on top of these big-ass evil gadget bots and firing plasma balls at you. 
will also activate the deplanetizer a couple of times, and you have to smash the button with Clank's jetpack to disengage the countdown. Towards the end, missiles start flying all over the place, and I never actually noticed them hurt me at all. I feel like they're there to just add to the chaos of the situation and inflict more shit, shit, shit into the player. Anyway, this boss is good as fuck. After defeating Drek, he accidentally turns a deplanetizer towards his planet, and you blow it and him to smithereens. Ratchet and Clank almost die. Clank breaks his arm, saving Ratchet, and after saving Ratchet's life, he still leaves Clank for dead. God, I hate this stupid brat. Oh, never mind. Ratchet turns back and is like, "Hey, where you going? We gotta fix that all." In all seriousness, this ending is very heartwarming. After the credits, it's a Saturday with the boys at the Ratchet warehouse as they watch a commercial of Steve Mc. Work. Demonstrating Gadgetron's new personal hygienator to their absolute horror. Once the epilogue wraps up, you're given the choice of either warping back in time to before you defeated Drek, or restarting the game with your current weapons, bolts, and gold bolts. In this renewed playthrough, you will earn bolts at a faster rate, and you can also purchase gold weapons with those gold bolts I've mentioned. In conclusion, several weapons weren't worth a buy, and the main combat could use some refinement due to it being a bit too loose and awkward. Ratchet's a bit too much of an asshole during that middle portion of the game, but it does make for great redemption of his character and makes his reconciliation with Clank all the more sweeter. Ratchet and Clank is filled to the brim with brilliant music, a fantastic aesthetic, charismatic characters, remarkable level design, varied gameplay with mostly tight responsive controls, and a simple yet captivating story. With that said, Ratchet and Clank is truly Quartastic! Oh wait, forgot to mention the Rhino, which is by far the most expensive and powerful weapon in the game. It absolutely fucks. Okay, come on. What's a rhino, anyway? Rip ya a new one. What did you just say to me?